welcome to the no bra zone it's kathleen from cause creations and i'm glad you guys are here we're going to be doing a fun pour today we're going to get our blues and silvers on and our clouds on and i've gone ahead and got a lot of things ready for us because i don't want to have to fast forward through this video so i'm going to try to walk you through and talk you through every single aspect of it before i do though i want to show you the pour we did about four or five days ago i call it sierra and it has dried so beautifully and i am over the moon excited. I can't wait to put a varnish on it so this black paint really pops, but no bonkers, no imperfections. It's just shimmery, absolutely beautiful with those different golds and coppers that I use. So I'm, uh, I'm real happy with it. There you go, we'll look at it this way. So I wanted to share that with you, almost 100% dry. In a week or two, we'll go ahead and put uh, a nice varnish on it. And then my handy dandy man, Ricardo, will uh, make a pretty, uh, pretty frame for it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about what we got going on here. Our base coat today is Artist Loft White, and it's mixed with my pouring medium. All the paints are mixed with the same pouring medium. 75% Floetrol to 25% GAC 800. And make sure you guys stir that pouring medium if it's been sitting for a while because if you've got two different entities in there, they'll kind of separate a little bit on you. So um, we have our Satin Enamel Pure White and I mix that with my Artist Loft about 50-50 and then the pouring medium added to it. We are about 50% paint to 50% pouring medium on most of these colors. Um, our next color is the Deco Art Metallics, and this is the silver. And I mixed a little bit of my golden iridescent silver in there with that. We also have my favorite shade of blue. Payne's Gray. It's the color other than the, the neutral tones that I've incorporated into my home. I absolutely love this. We have Golden Turquoise, which is the richest, most beautiful shade of turquoise I think I have ever seen. These colors are so, so vibrant. We have Deco Art Metallic Paints Aquamarine. And we have Deco Art Metallics Pewter. Now, if you haven't tried this color, guys, I discovered this about 10 months ago when I first started my pouring journey. This color is beautiful. Now, let's talk about mixing these Deco Art Metallics. I want to, well, we're almost to the bottom here, but I don't know if you can see that, guys, but this paint is so thick. Now, this is one of the few paints that when, after I have added my pouring medium to, I sometimes add just a little squirt of water to bring it down to the right consistency. And that's okay. These guys are thick. They go a real long way. So our base coat is down with the Artist Loft White. Now my cups are already mixed because I wanted to do this kind of quick for you guys because I didn't want to fast forward through anything. Plus Rick is upstairs. My handy dandy handsome man is not only handy dandy, but he can cook. And we are making our wonderful veggie fajitas on the grill with broccoli and carrots and caramelized onions. And we eat them in nice warm tortillas. So. I'm really excited about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a picture up that shows you my layers of colors. And the order in which I poured them into my cup. I started with the satin enamel white and I ended with the white and then I will line them up in the order that they went into my cup. 
there are three layers in this cup. More paint than I actually need, but uh, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and give it a go. We have two cups. We're gonna do two ring pours, and then we're gonna see what we wanna do with them after they show themselves here on this canvas. before I pour my other cup. Now I was cleaning out uh, my upstairs closet and I came across a painting, like I said, about 10 months ago in the beginning of my, my painting journey and it had these colors in it. Now, I look back at my pictures and back then I didn't record everything that I did or take photographs of everything I did. So I just kind of had to guess. And I think I'm pretty close. more uh, white satin enamel in it. Okay, come on now, stay on there. All right, let me get some gloves on so I don't have to spend 20 minutes before I have dinner scrubbing my hands. All right, guys, let's do this. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit first. It's hard when you have two ring pours because you gotta constantly keep looking what the top pour is doing while well, you're also trying to control what the bottom pour is doing. And I definitely want to leave some of that negative space. Well, in the middle is we're stuck with that, but that's okay. Oh, I don't know if you can see what's happening up there at the top. Oop, oop, dripping off my tray. All right, you know what, guys? I forgot to give this a torch, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Those are some pretty colors, guys. Oh, come on now. There we go. Not too much. I don't want a whole bunch of, well, here comes the measles. It's that flow trough. don't want to lose too much of that up there guys because that's real pretty. Just kind of go off that upper corner. And then we'll bring it back down. Oh, don't go away. this back to center. You know what, I'm gonna move it this way so I can get a different perspective here. And so can you, there we go. I 
Look at all those darn measles. Okay. Our canvas today, guys, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you our canvas size today is a 10 by 20, and it's a gallery wrapped canvas that I got on sale. Buy one, get two free at Michael's. I think that was last week. Let's go ahead and get that paint off the bottom or my top corner. Okay, I got a little bit of white showing up over there. Guys, when you're doing your pours, always, always make sure you keep a little bit of your paint in that cup because you will almost always need it. I didn't want to tilt anymore because I didn't want to lose those bubbles up there and I don't want that white coming back down. Let's get this guy kind of centered again. This is really fun down the middle. Let me clean up my sides a little bit and put another pair of gloves on because I don't want to accidentally pass my hands above this canvas and drip on it because I have done it before. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like two galaxies going on. I wish I had a little bit more of that uh, golden teal in here and I will probably attempt this again using more of this beautiful teal that you see right through here. Tell you what, let me go ahead. I don't want to tilt this down here too much anymore, down to the corner. So I'm going to clean up this white line that I, this white base coat that you still see over here. Now I'm also pouring enough over my sides because our sides are important, guys, especially if you're not going to frame your canvases. The nice thing about these gallery wraps is you don't have to frame them. They just are, are so chunky, and the way they present themselves on the wall is just beautiful. Um, so that means your sides are almost equally as important as what's on the top of your canvas. Okay, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, lose some of that, uh, that pewter and that gray that's going on. Not much movement. trying to get a better curve going on that white negative space in the middle. I don't like this little part right over here, guys. So I'm going to drag a little bit of this pretty silver through it. And because I'm a symmetrical kind of girl, I'm going to do the same thing down here on this corner. 
Now I let my stick kind of start to drip down the side because once again, I want to see that gray going down the side so it matches up with what's going on on the top of this canvas. And then I'll add a little bit of a drip over here so it kind of rolls down that canvas side. Now we've got some pretty little milky cells going on over there, but they're extremely inconsistent. So I have a bottle here with a mix of satin enamel and Floetrol. I am gonna pour some of this in a paper cup. Grab my handy dandy pop popsicle stick. Give it a quick little stir. And let's go ahead and add some man-made cells to this guy. Let me make sure I'm centered here. You can see everything. There you go. So I put very little paint on my popsicle stick and I usually run the bottom part of it off the edge of the cup so that the paint is just on the top of the popsicle stick. Now, once you torch these guys, they're gonna kind of expand into the paint below, which makes them look a little bit more like the cells that the paint made. And I kind of mix them up with the existing cells. Remember now, the first drop of paint that comes off of your popsicle stick is going to be the biggest blob of paint. And then as you go, they get a little bit smaller. Very little paint, guys. Are you gonna have this bubble kind of sticking up once your paint dries? Okay, now I've got a few haphazard little white sections over here that I'm not a real fan of. So I'm gonna grab our paint, kind of match it up. This is the darker Payne's gray. This is the more, this is the silver. This is the pewter color. And it's similar to what I'm looking at here. So I'm just gonna run my popsicle stick very lightly through that. And there's one there, we're gonna take that away as well. But you wanna kind of follow the line of the painting. If you get all squiggly, it's gonna mess up the lines that you see going in this direction. Now that didn't quite work, so we're gonna hit it one more time from this direction. Add some paint to that drip line going down so that the sides look good. I'm gonna get rid of that little guy right in there. And I'm just lightly dragging that popsicle stick. I'm almost like staying on the surface with it. Okay, and see that little guy? Now, if there were a bunch of them around, I would leave him, but he's all by himself there, so we're gonna send him away. Now, you don't have to go all the way across. You can kind of just slowly pick up your popsicle stick and just kind of let it 
blend right in there. Now, your line will generally be a little thinner than when you started out because the paint's going to sink a little bit or the paints around it will engulf that line. Um, let's go ahead and hit this with a torch because I see some air bubbles. That was a big guy. All right, we got lots of measles over here. So, either live with them or you make more of them. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try to make a few more. This is kind of a, um, a circular rotation going on here. So I'm going to over torch in a circular rotation as well. I'm sorry if you hear that noise, guys. We've got my next door neighbor, bless his heart, blowing his leaves. Can you see him popping up? So if you have a few of those uh, measles, as Jen Neal calls them, at least I heard her call them that, and you're not a real fan, turn them into more measles so they look like they're supposed to be there. And that's just by kind of over torching. Voila. I'm symmetrical, so let's see if we can get those measles going on over here. There they are. Now don't stay in one spot too long, guys, or your paint's going to bubble up on you. So there are your measles. Now, I like this painting from here up. I don't like this. I don't like the man-made cells that we put down. So what do we do? We take it away. What do we use? I say we use our white base coat. We could always do black, but I think the white base coat's gonna complement the center of that cloud over there. So when do you do that? You do it after most of your tilting is done because you don't want the other part of your painting to move as you're tilting the additional paint that you're adding on here. Now, we're gonna get a little bit of movement, but I think we'll be able to work it on back. So I'm gonna put down some of my base coat. I'm gonna take it from here down. I'm gonna put some of that in a smaller cup, guys. Hmm, I think I need a little bit more right up in here. Now, I'm going to tilt it towards me to let this white base coat run down, but I got to keep an eye on what's going up up here because we don't want this to get distorted. So, kind of slow and easy. Pay attention to the middle and the top part of the painting, guys. You can see that it's not moving that much. That's because We've already tilted off the majority of our paints. That's when you do your enhancements. If you do them before them, then, and you have to tilt, you're gonna lose a lot of your composition from the enhancements that you did. Now we got some movement coming down, but that's okay. I'm gonna send it back up here in just a second. Okay, let's get that guy back to center.
and tilt it back down to add a little bit more negative space at the bottom there. Now, sometimes when you add or take away a part of a painting like I just did, you end up with an overly defined line here. And when that happens, I sometimes hit it with um, a straw and kind of blow it out a little bit. But you can see that uh, this painting helped us out. It kind of blended into the white base coat. So. There you have it, guys. I think I'm done. I might come in and accentuate this with a little bit more teal, but I'm gonna have to mix some up. And um, that was fun. Let's bring it in for a close-up. Look at this section right here, guys. Oh my gosh, it's super duper cool. I had one of my patent peeps reach out to me on YouTube the other day saying, Oh my God, Kathleen, you don't have to pick up that canvas. I'm afraid you'll drop it. We could see it just fine. It's a little nerve wracking. Well, there you go, guys. I'm so glad that you joined me. You know what? I took my darn gloves on, but I'm going to flip this around because this is the way that I see this painting with the negative space up there at the top. Is that centered okay for you guys? There you have it. Look at that. Ended up paint on my hands anyways. Really happy you guys joined me. I will miss you till I see you again. Have a fantastic evening or day ahead. Thanks for joining me guys. Bye now.